Most diseases are known for their salubrious names, and fatty liver disease is no exception. Fatty liver disease, a condition where excess fat accumulates in the liver, is becoming increasingly common. In this video, we'll be joining Dr. Michael Greger, a renowned physician and author of How Not to Die, to explore the power of food as medicine when it comes to combating fatty liver disease. Dr. Greger is a champion for evidence-based nutrition empowering you to take control of your liver health through smart food choices. Today, we're diving into the science of fatty liver disease, uncovering the dietary heroes that can help reverse the condition and promote a healthy liver. Get ready to learn how specific foods can reduce inflammation, improve fat metabolism, and protect your liver's cells. Dr. Greger will unveil the surprising link between your gut microbiome and liver health revealing how certain foods can nurture the good bacteria and starve the bad, potentially improving your liver function. We'll also explore the dangers of processed foods, sugary drinks, and unhealthy fats, all of which can contribute to fatty liver disease. This video will equip you with a powerful roadmap with the best foods to combat fatty liver disease. Let's hear from Dr. Greger how a fatty liver develops. Okay, so what's the source of the liver fat in fatty liver disease? There are three main sources. The excess sugar in our diet, excess fat in our diet, and the fat spilling over from your own excess body fat. What proof do we have that sugar is bad for you? How do we know excess dietary sugar is bad? Because it's been put to the test. Because if you randomize teens with fatty liver disease to a diet low in free sugars, meaning added sugar and sugary beverages, they experienced a significant improvement within eight weeks. Given this new data, Liver Journal editorial read, a strong argument can be made that we are beyond any period of uncertainty about the harmful effects of excess sugar consumption, and they must now act to inform the public on the health risks of eating too much sugar. What proof do we have that excess fat is bad for you? How do we know excess dietary fat is bad? Because it's been put to the test. Randomized people to the same low-calorie diet, but one that's low-fat versus one that's high-fat. And within just two weeks, the low-fat diet decreased liver fat by 20%, whereas the same number of calories on the high-fat diet increased liver fat by 35%. On the low-fat diet, insulin levels went down about 15%, and on the high-fat diet, insulin levels went up about 15%. Any other proof? So what is fatty liver disease and how can we not get it? Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is now the most frequent chronic liver disease thanks in part to our epidemic of obesity, now even seen in children. As many as nearly 78% of obese children may have fatty liver disease. Why do we care? Because a fatty liver can progress into fatty hepatitis which can cause scarring and liver cirrhosis, which is bad enough without also causing you to develop liver cancer too. What diets would be best? So to help prevent or treat fatty liver disease, patients should limit or avoid eating fat-rich foods. While more long-term clinical trials are always needed, right, based on current evidence, we would recommend a diet low in fat, notably saturated fat, so low in meat, dairy, and junk, and low in refined carbs, notably soda. Uh, saturated fat is not only more metabolically harmful for the human liver than unsaturated fat, right? saturated fat is more harmful than straight sugar. If you overfeed people with a thousand calories of saturated fat, like cheese and coconut oil, unsaturated fat, like uh, nuts and olive oil, or sugar, like soda and candy, overeating a thousand calories a day of anything isn't good for you, but the saturated fat increased liver fat 55%, significantly more than the unsaturated fats, with the candy coming in in between. There are healthy fat sources. Many fat-rich foods can be part of a healthy diet if consumed in moderation. Examples include avocados, nuts, fatty fish, olive oil, and seeds. These foods offer essential nutrients and healthy fats. What can we do? So in terms of weight loss, although beneficial, I mean, certain diets can actually cause or exacerbate this disease, such as a very low carbohydrate, high fat diet, whereas those eating healthy plant-based diets may lower the risk of fatty liver disease. 
For example, the consumption of legumes, right, beans, split peas, chickpeas, and lentils, is associated with a lower risk of fatty liver, up to 65% lower odds eating more beans. Now, in this study, they weren't looking at people eating strictly plant-based diets, just more or less so. I mean, it's harder to study those eating completely meat-free diets, since they currently represent just a small segment of the U.S. population. But what about Americans of Indian descent? Those originating from the Indian subcontinent are one of the fastest-growing ethnic groups in the United States, and they appear to largely retain their diets, with about the same percentage of vegetarians as in India, and nearly 40%. Uh, we know in India itself, non-vegetarians, those who eat meat, are at significantly higher risk of fatty liver disease. In Taiwan, you see the same thing. Vegetarians at significantly lower risk. And even the vegetarians who are affected had significantly less liver scarring. Uh, their data suggests that replacing a single serving of soy with a serving of meat or fish was associated with you know, 12 to 13 percent increased risk of fatty liver disease. Okay, but what about here in the United States? Are there any studies from the U.S.? Eating vegetarian was associated with being slimmer, having better blood sugars, better cholesterol, and less than half the odds of fatty liver disease. You don't know if it's cause and effect, though, until you put it to the test. In an effort to reverse a fatty liver patient's inflammatory bowel disease with a plant-based diet, liver inflammation was dramatically improved. Nah, but he also lost 9 pounds in the first 11 days thanks to eating healthy. So it's hard to tease out the specific diet effects. In fact, you have to be careful about rapid weight loss because all that extra fat being broken down can flood into the bloodstream and sometimes make things worse. So for fatty liver disease patients, losing like 3 pounds a week might be safer. Even though plant-based diets have yet to properly be put to the test in a randomized clinical trial for fatty liver disease, I would submit that they are still the best diet for fatty liver disease. Uh, not based on a single case report, but based on the fact that cardiovascular disease is the most common cause of death among patients with fatty liver disease, right? not liver failure. And we do have randomized controlled trials proving that a healthy plant-based diet and lifestyle program can reverse heart disease, opening up arteries without drugs, without surgery, without stents, Yes, patients with fatty liver disease and fatty hepatitis may indeed eventually develop cirrhosis of the liver, but only if they don't die of cardiovascular diseases. What are some specific healthy foods for fatty liver? Whole grain consumption might have a direct health benefit on fatty liver disease. If oatmeal is so powerful that it can clear up some of the ravages of chemotherapy just applied to the skin, what might it do if we actually ate it? the pharmacology of oatmeal. Oats are reported to possess varied drug-like activities like lowering blood cholesterol and blood sugar, boosting our immune system, anti-cancer, antioxidant, anti-atherosclerosis, in addition to being a topical anti-inflammatory. It may also be useful in controlling childhood asthma, body weight, etc. Whole grain intake in general is associated with lower risk of type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and weight gain. All the cohort studies on type 2 diabetes and heart disease show whole grain intake is associated with lower risk. They observed the same for obesity, consistently less weight gain for those who consumed a few servings of whole grains every day. Yes, all the forward-looking population studies demonstrate that higher intake of whole grains is associated with lower body mass index and body weight gain. However, these results do not clarify whether whole grain consumption is simply a marker of a healthier lifestyle or a factor favoring per se lower body weight. Uh, for example, high whole grain consumers, those who eat whole wheat and brown rice and have oatmeal for breakfast, tend to be more physically active, uh, smoke less, and consume more fruits, vegetables, and dietary fiber than those that instead reach for fruit loops. Uh, statistically, one can control these factors effectively, uh, comparing only non-smokers to non-smokers with similar exercise and diet, as most of the studies did, and they still found whole grains to be protective via a variety of mechanisms. Um, so, for example, in helping with weight control, the soluble fiber of oatmeal forms a gel in the stomach, uh, delaying stomach emptying, making one feel full for a longer period, which helps with weight loss, and uh, then there are other effects in the small and large intestine. So it all seems plausible 
that whole grain intake does indeed offer direct benefits. However, only results from randomized controlled intervention studies can provide the evidence of cause and effect. In other words, the evidence is clear that oatmeal consumers have lower rates of disease. But that's not the same as proving that if we start to eat more oatmeal, our risk will drop. To know that, we need an interventional trial, ideally a blinded study where you, know, you give half the people oatmeal and the other half fake placebo oatmeal that looks and tastes like oatmeal to see if it actually works. As you can imagine, this has not been done until now. And the results are? Double-blinded, randomized trial of overweight and obese men and women, and almost 90% of the real oatmeal uh, treated subjects had reduced body weight compared to no weight loss in the control group, a slimmer waist on average, a 20-point drop in cholesterol, and an improvement in liver function. I feel like I am a blueberry. I just wonder, I really wonder if I am the food I eat. Did you ever wonder if the food you eat has a direct effect on your health, well-being, and longevity? Well, I'm here to end that mystery. You are the food you eat. I knew it. I am a blueberry. Share in the comments what you are. Remember, your health is the lock, and we're here to provide the keys. Keep turning to Key Health for insights that unlock your full potential. The key to lifelong vitality is in your hands. It's just one bite away.